Hello, my name is Ben Bartlett. I'm a PhD student at Stanford University and Shanwei Fans Group, and today I will talk about an architecture for photonic quantum programmable gate arrays. These results are from our paper, Universal Programmable Photonic Architecture for Quantum Information Processing, which was published last month in Physical Review A. A quick summary of this talk is that we propose an architecture for a programmable photonic integrated circuit which can be dynamically reconfigured to prepare any quantum state or operator. Also, we use machine learning to implement quantum operators with fewer physical resources. For some background, universal linear optical components are devices which can be dynamically programmed to apply any linear transformation to a set of optical modes. Such devices are often implemented as a mesh of phase-modulated Mach-Zender interferometers, or MZIs, which operate on a set of spatial modes. These devices have tremendous application in information processing, and especially machine learning, owing to the fact that they can be used to perform matrix multiplication fully optically using very little power and at clock rates far greater than those allowed by electronic devices. Programmable photonics is also useful for quantum information processing. There have been recent experimental demonstrations of boson sampling, quantum transport dynamics, photonic quantum walks, counterfactual communication, and non-deterministic two-photon gates, all using this paradigm of optical device. Photonics offers a wide array of advantages as a substrate for quantum information processing. Photons have long coherence times, photonic states are maintainable at room temperature, one can easily perform high-fidelity single-qubit operations using a variety of methods, and photons are optimal for quantum communication between distant nodes in a quantum network. However, there are several intrinsic difficulties for quantum photonics. Multi-qubit gates are difficult to implement, as photons don't readily interact. Many proposals for multi-qubit gates implemented with programmable optics either encode in qubits using exponentially many spatial modes or operate non-deterministically with a probability of success much less than one. Also, since photons must propagate at the speed of light, quantum operations must be done along the path of the photon by sequential optical components, making complex quantum circuits prohibitively large to implement using free space optics. These systems, and even some integrated photonic circuits, often suffer from a lack of reconfigurability, as the design of task-specific optical circuitry must be modified to perform different computations. To address these difficulties, we proposed a device which we call a quantum programmable gate array. This is an architecture for an integrated photonic circuit which can be dynamically reprogrammed to implement any photonic quantum state or operator without hardware modifications. The use of embedded quantum emitters in the device allows for one to efficiently encode in qubits using O of n spatial modes, and the operation of the device is, in principle, fully deterministic. A schematic of our proposed architecture is shown here. The physical layout for a 4-qubit QPGA is shown in panel A, and the corresponding logical quantum circuit is shown in B. The architecture is a lattice of programmable optical cells, one of which is depicted in C, and the energy structure of the embedded quantum emitters is shown in D. I will discuss each of these in more detail shortly. Qubits are represented as temporarily separated single photon pulses, which are sequentially injected into the inputs of the device. Each photon is spectrally narrow, about a carrier frequency omega, and has a long pulse width. Qubits are path encoded by the photon number within each pair of optical modes. The basis states 0 and 1 for each qubit correspond to measuring a qubit in the top or bottom waveguide of each pair. Importantly, photon number is conserved within each pair of waveguides, and photons do not travel between waveguides during scattering interactions. So, at any point in the device, the total photon number in a pair of waveguides, which collectively represent a qubit, is exactly 1. Single qubit operations are implemented in our architecture by phase-modulated MZIs. An MZI with four phase shifters can implement any U2 operator. The total transfer matrix of the MZI takes the form shown here, and using a suitable choice of zeta, xi, theta, and phi, one can implement any single qubit operation, such as these gates, which are commonly used in quantum computing. In addition to arbitrary single qubit gates, the QPGA needs to be able to implement two qubit entangling operations in order to be computationally universal. This is accomplished using nonlinear interactions between two photons scattering off of a pair of quantum emitters embedded within the waveguides. These emitters could be quantum dots, diamond vacancy centers, or many other experimental setups. This scattering process is adapted from a 2013 proposal by Zing et al., with the notable differences that spatial modes, rather than momentum states, form the computational basis for the physical qubits, and that in gate operation, two photons interact with two emitters instead of one emitter, where the level of overlap between the input spatial modes adjusts the action of the gate. At the beginning of each scattering cell, the spatial modes of two neighboring photonic qubits which represent the one states are directed into a pair of waveguides. The scattering process which implements the controlled Z gate on the two-photon state can be described in four steps. 
In step 1, photon A with frequency omega causes the four-level system to transition from state 1 to state 3 due to hard wall boundary conditions that I will discuss shortly. The transition has an amplitude which depends on the magnitude of the one component of the photon state that is directed into the waveguide, and it emits an auxiliary photon A prime at a frequency omega prime into a delay line, which is matched in length to omega prime. In step 2, photon B, also at a frequency omega, interacts with the four-level system. Any part of the atom which is in the 3 state imparts a pi phase shift onto B, and any part of the atom which is in the 1 state transitions to the 3 state, emitting an auxiliary photon B prime into the delay line. In step 3, photon A prime retrieves photon A by time reversal symmetry, and in step 4, photon B prime also retrieves photon B. At the end of the gate operation, the atom is fully disentangled from the 2 photon state and the 1 1 component of the photon state has acquired a pi phase shift, implementing a controlled Z operation. To see why this is the case, consider the Hamiltonian of the waveguide emitter system, which is shown here. The first term describes the dynamics of the waveguides, represented by the B operator, and the reservoir that models the environment, represented by C. The second term describes the energy structure of the quantum emitter, and the third term describes the atom transitions and emission of a photon into the waveguide, coupled as gamma, and into the environment, coupled as gamma prime. To derive these reflection coefficients, we start from an arbitrary atom photon state psi a. Solving the Schrodinger equation for psi a using the Hamiltonian from the previous slide, we derived reflection coefficients for left and right propagating pulses, and we did the same for psi b. In the long pulse limit, where the photon wave function is approximately e to the ikx, the reflection coefficients take the form shown here. If the critical boundary condition that a equals n pi over omega plus omega prime is met, then these reflection coefficients become 0, 1, or negative 1. Thus, during the gate operation, the atom transitions from 1 to 3 to 3 to 1, gaining phases of 1 or minus 1 with each step. These phases cancel except for the two-photon component of the state, which gains a pi phase shift. At the end of the gate operation, the final output state is equal to controlled z times the input state if the eta phase shifter is set to pi over 2, which allows the two photon pulses to overlap and interact with the same quantum emitter. But if eta is set to 0, then the output state is identity times the input state, as the photon pulses are each directed to separate quantum emitters, disabling the gate action. Because photon number must be conserved within each pair of waveguides, eta is not a continuously variable parameter which is an important limitation when we train simulated QPGAs, which I will discuss shortly. Now that we have described how this physical architecture emulates a logical quantum circuit, we would like to know how to program the device. The architecture we described parameterizes any quantum circuit using U2 and controlled Z primitives. The programmable parameters here are zeta, xi, theta, and phi for each cell, which configure the single qubit gates, and eta, which can be set to 0 or pi over 2 to adjust the connectivity of the controlled Z gates between nearest neighbor qubits. By programming a QPGA, we mean the process of decomposing a desired quantum circuit into phase shift values which could be flashed onto a physical device. In our paper, we described algorithms for exactly preparing arbitrary quantum states and operators on a QPGA, which I'll very briefly touch on here. For state preparation, an arbitrary quantum state is constructed from the zero state using a sequence of multiply controlled rotations between neighboring qubits. For operator preparation, one can use QR factorization to decompose the target unitary operator into a sequence of controlled Gibbons rotations. These rotations do not have any physical quantum gate analog, but if the basis states are permuted using the gray code ordering, denoted by little gamma, then they correspond to the Gibbons rotations applied to a single photon controlled by all other photons. As you would expect, both algorithms do have a worst-case exponential circuit depth, but they are efficient for a wide class of interesting quantum states and operators, including GHZ states, Dyke states, symmetric quantum states, quantum Fourier transforms, and many others. Although we can explicitly program a QPGA to implement exact quantum operators, we can also leverage techniques from machine learning to implement high-fidelity approximate decompositions of a target operator using fewer physical circuit layers. The goal here is to find a set of phase shifts which minimizes some cost function, in this case the operator infidelity. The trainable parameters are the single qubit phase shift values. However, the eta phase shifts, which adjust the controlled z connectivity between adjacent qubits, are not continuously variable or trainable, so we need a fixed circuit architecture to train around. To do this, we used a checkerboard style connectivity, where half of the controlled z gates are disabled. The transfer matrix of the system takes the form shown here, and the single qubit phase shifters are allowed to train around this fixed structure. 
The optimization routine finds a set of parameters which maximizes the fidelity over a set of randomly generated training input states. The simulations presented here use a custom backend built with TensorFlow, which is available on the fan group GitHub. As a demonstration of this optimization routine, we trained a model of a QPGA with 4 qubits and 20 circuit layers to implement a quantum Fourier transform. Exactly preparing a QPGA to implement this operator requires 57 circuit layers, but a QPGA with 20 layers can use gradient-based circuit optimization to achieve a fidelity of 99.94%. The figure shown here depicts the operator implemented by the simulated device at various points in training, as well as the fidelity over the course of the optimization. The size of each square represents the magnitude of each of the matrix elements of the implemented operator, while the phase is denoted by the hue. The operator starts off randomly initialized with very little structure, but it rapidly converges over 50 iterations to an operator which is visually indistinguishable from the target operator. As a more animated example, here is the evolution of a 5-qubit QPGA being trained to implement a 5-qubit QFT. As in the previous slide, the operator starts off randomly initialized, but quickly converges to a high-fidelity approximation of a quantum Fourier transform. Other simulations we performed using the same 4-qubit, 20-layer QPGA are shown here. The lower left depicts training the model to implement a GHC state, which reaches a final fidelity of 99.94%. The lower right depicts training an ensemble of randomly sampled 4-qubit states. The QPGA reaches an average fidelity of 99.92%, which indicates that a QPGA of this depth is sufficient to create arbitrary 4-qubit states with high fidelity. Finally, to better characterize the compactness of the numerically optimized versus explicitly constructed circuits, we performed a search over qubit number and circuit depth to find trained circuits which match the target operator to within 99.9% fidelity, using the quantum Fourier transform as a benchmark. The gradient-based QFT implementations typically require only one-third as many layers as their explicitly constructed counterparts. To summarize, in this talk, I described a photonic architecture for a quantum programmable gate array capable of implementing arbitrary quantum states, operators, and computations. I showed that the device can be programmed to implement exact quantum states and operators, and I described a gradient-based circuit optimization routine which automatically discovers compact, high-fidelity approximations to target quantum operators. Thank you for your attention, and this concludes my talk.